How about I give you another example? I noticed when I walked up to the door here, there's a big peanut, a picture of a peanut with a slash in it. What is that all about? Why do you have that picture? Uh, yes, over here. Yeah, so some people are allergic to, to peanuts, right? So when we're talking about uh, this peanut rule, right, that you're not allowed to have it, who do you think is really affected by that, by peanuts? The majority of students here or the minority? What do you think? Yes, in the back, in the red shirt. Um, the minority? Minority. So we have this rule. So let me ask, let's take a quick vote. How many people in this room actually like peanut butter, like Reese's peanut butter cups and things like that? Yeah, I'm one of them for sure. Especially with Halloween coming up, I'm excited to have a few Reese's peanut butter cups come my way from my nephew. So um, if we were to take a vote, based on you know, what people actually like, I think for the most part people would say, let's have peanut butter in this school, wouldn't we? But would that be fair? In this situation, is it appropriate to take a vote and decide on what's good for this school based on majority rules? Would that be fair? So how many people think, yes, it's fair? How many people think, no, it wouldn't be fair to decide that way? Okay, so, so in a democracy, right, even though yes, we do take votes, there's also this notion that we have to have a balance, right? You know, like on, on the playground, you see those seesaws sometimes, right? Sometimes that's how we have to decide things in this country. Kind of do a balancing act, right? Pretend we're on a seesaw. On the one side, we're looking at, you know, everybody really likes peanut butter, it's delicious. On the other side, it's some kid's safety. And which one of those things are we gonna find more important? So that's one way to think about fairness too. Not just about votes, but about doing this sort of balancing act. Okay, everyone, so now we're going to do a case study, okay? So hopefully we have just enough time to discuss it. So, there is a city, let's say, for example, we'll call it Cloverville, and Cloverville suddenly had a rise in vandalism. To combat this, the mayor decides to put on, to start, a curfew on young people. So anyone under the age of 18 is not allowed outside of their house past 10 p.m. So anyone out found outside in a public place could potentially have, um, their parents could potentially be fined up to $1,000. So what do we think about this curfew? We're gonna ask these questions, okay? So take a moment to think about it, maybe with a friend beside you or behind you. Ask these questions, and we'll debate as a class. <laughs> here. So what is the reason why? What is the reason the mayor decided to put this law into place? What is, what's the purpose? Yes, sir. Yeah, so he's trying to stop vandalism from happening in the city. So we can say that's probably a very good reason. We don't like vandalism, do we? Right? So the next question, we remember what we said, just because you have a good reason doesn't make it fair. So the next question is, will it work? What do you think? Will all vandalism stop? If every kid and every person under the age of 18 is inside their house uh, at, before ten, or after 10 p.m., what do you think? Yes? No. Why? They, they might still be like, even, if he was going to do that, it would be even better for like daytime. Okay. You know what? You raised a very interesting point. You can still vandalize the city in the daytime. You're absolutely right. And maybe more people will start doing it in the daytime instead. What did you want to say? In the, in the red t-shirt, yes. Will it work? Okay. Ah, you know what? You're starting to answer this question. What else will it do? What are the consequences of that curfew? And you said there might be some occasions where it's necessary to be outside of your house past 10 p.m. That has nothing to do with you wanting to vandalize the city, right? What else did you want to say about that? Uh, say like. What if it's like they're 15 and they have a job at night, like Very a good. night shift? Very good. And they're waiting outside for a parent to come pick them up and then a police car drives by and gives them a fine. Very good, and that's a really good scenario that you thought of. What if someone has a job and they're 16, they work at you know McDonald's or they work at the mall or wherever, and they're just standing outside, they've worked all day, and then suddenly a police car comes and gives them a fine. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. What did you want to say? Ah, 
That's an interesting question too. That's a very good question. And that's actually a sad, a sad question. What if there are some homeless young people out there, right? And so certainly they don't have any enough money to even have a home. Are they going to have money to be able to pay a fine when, they, when they're told that they break this curfew? Certainly not. So that's a great example, actually, of someone, just like the lightning bug, who is perhaps treated more unfairly by this law than maybe other people, right? So this is someone who can't help it but be, to be outside during those hours. So that's a really good point that you make. So what do you want to say? Yeah. Thank you. Very, very good point you made. This question here, will it work? You're saying no because you can still vandalize if you're over 18. And what does this say? Here's another question I want to ask you. What kind of message is this sending to the general public about how we feel about young people? What do you think? What kind of message does this send? Yes. It's accusing like our kids. Like why do they think we would do vandalism? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah, it's kind of making an accusation. It's kind of assuming that just because you're young, you're a, you're a vandal. I'm really happy that you're starting to think about this and it, this issue of fairness. And how might we make these rules that we perceive to be unfair a little bit better? So I just want you guys to keep in mind that these are the questions you always want to ask. And you also want to do that sort of balancing act we talked about earlier when we're thinking about issues of fairness, right? It's not only about majority should always win. And these are the kinds of questions we should always ask ourselves when we're trying to make those difficult decisions. And I'm glad you understand that when you do realize that something's unfair, you know what rights and freedoms you have to be able to raise your voice and stand up for somebody when you think something unfair is happening. So thank you guys for having me here today. You did a wonderful job. Give yourselves a pat on the back. You did a really good job.